venture capital, this is more for the business guys. <coughs> venture capital funds, management groups, there seems to be a lack of them in this area. If you look at the business, that's where a lot of the, the market people are going with their money right now. It's up 82%. Could you, and, and we all know about the economic job situation in this county, why is there such, and we all know that Hickory does have a lot of money through hard work and starting up their own businesses. Why aren't, and, and I feel your frustration about getting businesses involved, why isn't some of this money into a venture capital group, again, this community, I'm not from around here, I love it around here, for what you said, the value, so on and so forth. Why aren't we seeing some of these groups saying, hey man, this is a great place, we're going to start up a venture capital fund or two around here to help businesses, to help people get up and going. Well, I've, I've asked Bill Parrish that exact same question. Bill is, is head of the Small Business Technology and Development Center, and he is involved in, in two uh, investor-ready groups that fund businesses, and you've got to be worth it to do that. You've got to have a $2 million work for us, at least worth. And he goes to Charlotte and he goes to Winston-Salem for his meeting. And I said, Bill, what, what's going on? We need to do it right here. Why are we not doing that? He said, we're not ready. What do you mean now, not ready? The demand is not here. So I, I wish you were here to better explain that. But I'm not giving up on that. And I think that he would be in a position to, to try to start something here to do that. Um, but I, I, he has to be convinced that there is demand. Now, like our Edison project last year, we put an APB out to anybody that's got a creative business idea or that's in business less than a year. Do you want to try to get to the marketplace? Do you need access to capital? Would you come and present your ideas with us, fill out an application? We had the minimum number of responses. So that told us something too, that there's, it's the need issue, and are we ready? Dan, can you and David talk a little bit more about somebody that applies for the Edison Project, what the process and what they get out of it? I think that's something. Edison 2012 will begin uh, at the 1st of April. April and May, you will have an opportunity to go to our website and fill out an application. It's an executive summary about your business idea. Or you can be in business, and we've changed the rules a little bit this year. It can be in any of the four <laughs> counties. If you have revenues of less than $350,000 and you've got a new idea, you can also apply. But you fill out an executive summary, and it gives you a sample of an executive summary questions that you need to answer. And it's, it is just a thousand words. And then we will judge the top ten finalists of those ideas, and then they will go on to develop a business plan with our help. They'll make a presentation to Investor Ready Angels uh, from out of town uh, that will look at and hear your presentation on your business plan. You'll be judged on the written business plan and the oral presentation. And then we'll have a final community-wide presentation of five minutes from the finalists. Uh, and we'll give out $5,000 to first prize, 3000 to second, and 2000 to third. On that, say, say you have a product. Say you have a product that you've been working on. You have your money invested in it. You show your product up there for everybody to see. What? My intellectual rights, do you have a patent pending? Do you sign waivers? How, how does that work? My next, my next statement is angel investors. I, I put in, I'm working on a project and I put in a lot of my savings. Angel investors, they're going to say, okay, I'm going to take 60% of your product. And I guess that's the chance you take by saying, okay, Mr. Angel Investor, come on in. I'll, I'll you know, I put out all this work, you're going to give me the money to get it up and running and take 60% of my company. Whereas if you could get to a capital venture people 
and say, here's my idea, like they do in California with all the high tech. They walk out of Stanford College two blocks down the street and say, here's my idea. Okay, we're going to fund you instead of going to the angel investor. I, I don't have anything with, against angel investors, but most times they're not looking out for you. And, and here you put your heart and guts and soul in, into a project, and then next thing you know, you're going to turn it over for 80%. And, and, and with the market so tight, you can't even get a home equity line now. You know what I mean? To, to fund your project that you put into it. And, and I think it's a great idea, but you're giving up a lot. And, and most people that are going to start a business or competitors, like you say, they don't want to do that. They're not they want, they want a pretty quick return, too. Uh, there's got to be other avenues that we have discussed of access to capital. And that's banks pooling their resources for low interest loans that can develop a loan pool that's a whole lot less forgiving than They're not out there. And, uh, but, but access to capital with banks is still very, very frustrating. You're going through this right now, though. Um, starting here with this question, what I got out of the Edison project um, was so impactful that it made me want wants me to give back to this Edison project. Uh, you will learn more than you ever thought you can learn, and you will learn how ignorant you are. I don't care at what point in your career you are. My, my background is implementing other people's ideas. That's where I had great success. So to implement my own idea was something new, and that's where the Edison project stepped in. And I would have to say that the greatest resource that came through the Edison project, project uh, other than the project itself, was the mentorship program it provided. The mentorship program exposes you to so many avenues, so many hurdles, um, educates you on what you don't know. These guys are passionate in helping you out. Um, and I guarantee you, not one of these guys is going to use the word I when they talk about their success. They're going to talk about the people around them, um, their spouses, their employees. And that's this Edison project is a reflection of that. To your question, honestly, my experience has been different. Uh, there's a clear difference between angel investors and venture capitalists. The venture capitalists, they're good, are, are the vultures. The angel investors, I'll tell you what, these, the guys that I've been in front of, and that's what had, came out of this Edison project, was exposure. The $5,000, I mean, that was nice, but that, was nothing in compared to the exposure that's come out of this. The, there's a whole world of angel investors out there. I don't know why we don't know about them, but I've been that door's been opened, and I'm I'm seeing where they are, and I'm finding where they are, and that's coming through the SBTDC, CBCC, the chamber. The angel investors are the ones that aren't going to take you for everything you got. They these are the guys who made it through the ranks themselves, gone through what you've gone through, and are so passionate about it, they want to give back. They're not going to fund your entire startup. They, they're, you know, there's a great group in Charlotte, IMAP, IMAF. They'll give up to $100,000. Now, the nice thing is there's seven of them in our state, so if you want to be able to drive to all seven and present, you, you have a good shot there. But these guys, the angel investors, they're very passionate about giving back to the community. Um, so my experience has been very positive. I've presented in front of these groups. They are very good at educating you before you even get there because they want they, these guys want you to succeed. Um, you know, it's going to be a tough decision that when you say, "All right, at what point do I give up percentage of my company?" Most of these guys probably got to the point where they said, "Well, you know, 100% of nothing." is not nearly as good as 10% of something. Um, and and that's, that's what happens. So, and this, it's a process. There is, it is not going to happen overnight. It's, there's not going to be one defining moment. <clears throat> you cannot survive as an entrepreneur looking at things day to day. You have to look at it month to month when you're starting it because it, it's a slow process and there will be great milestones. But you will frustrate yourself. If he just if Shane just focused on that time period of when his building burnt down, he wouldn't be where he is today. He had to look back at the successful history he had, 
He had to rely on his vision for what the future is going, what he believes is going to bring. So, and again, I wrap this around the Edison Project. You learn all these things through going through this process and by being assigned mentors and working with mentors. So, um, if any of you has an idea or even a, just a concept, which is what I had, I wasn't setting out to be successful by any means. I thought of an idea where I just wanted to maybe give my family some residual income every month where I can still do what I'd love to do. And it's flourished into something very impressive. Might I add to that just a, a, a wee bit? Uh, David, it's exactly right. In my experience, uh, my first angel investor was my father. Uh, and by that, I mean he let me borrow money for 90 days, which I had to pay back very quickly. Uh, he, you know, I looked to the family when we burned down, uh, close friends and family. I still own, uh, with my wife, uh, we own 70 couple percent of our company, so we didn't sell the farm. The angel investors that I found, I found through the passions that I have for sport. I found them through uh, one of my uh, dear friends, Greg Lamont, who knew wealthy people, and I found them in a hot tub, which I've told that story before. Um, and so I was very fortunate, but they, those were angel investors to me, and I've been very wary, and we've had lots of dances with full-on buyouts, full-on mergers, and full-on venture capital. I've been very wary of that. But I would guess that in Hickory, just from why aren't they here, they were here when we were forming the furniture companies of days gone by, when there were a lot of entrepreneurs in Hickory. And I think that now the, the, the country, for whatever reason, we, we ended up with the manufacturing going away, and I think the, the people with the cash kind of went away. However, in my opinion, they're still here, and it's now their grandchildren and the great-grandchildren of those companies that have been so successful with the great-grandfather being the entrepreneur, they're looking for ideas, in my opinion. I don't do anything locally, though. Uh, not of the money that I have received from angels has been local. It's been from uh, entrepreneurial, uh, very in intelligent people. One of them sold his company to, uh, to Yahoo. That he invented the calendar and the address book. Uh, the other one um, is an oil baron at age 40. So he went to MIT, and just by chance, they both like to ride bikes. So through my passion. And, I, and this may answer two questions here. Schindler's List, in the very beginning of that movie, the, the uh, Dr. Schindler, or I guess he's a doctor, or Mr. Schindler, orders a bottle of wine for a German officer and sends it to his table. And that sets him up for the whole entire rest of his, his uh, trials and tribulations. And it's the reason that he has the connections, the networking that you guys were talking about. So, anyway. I think uh, what we were talking about a little while ago really boils down to using the influencer. Certainly the fact that, that Dr. Schindler sent that bottle of wine uh, any relationship and any passion that you have. I, I want to make sure that you utilize what's in front of you, whether or not it's money related or venture capital related. One of the greatest assets that we have that I'm aware of in this community is sitting right back here, three rows from the back, and that's Dan St. Louis in the Manufacturing Solutions Center. That facility, one, has helped defeat out on a number of different occasions and uh, certainly it, its uh, entry was assisting in any way that it possibly could for the hosiery industry to, to basically cut it still here in the Catawba Valley. But it has morphed into an entire solutions factory and everything that they have, everything that they do and the probably the most passionate guy besides Shane and probably David in here and Garrett. <laughs> and Dan. <laughs> besides all that is uh, Dan and they wake up every day trying to figure out how to help industry to grow and to flourish here in the Catawba County area. So, uh, you know, Dan, really that is an asset that you got to use and I'm using that as an example to find that and other in entities that are here to try to help you. And a lot of them are free. 
you, you just saw a perfect example of what we were talking about a little while ago about Danny was saying about the right person to sell. Who just sold you all on the Manufacturing <laughs> Solutions Center at Tyler Valley Community College, the head of the EDC, who understands what it takes. You know, that's that's what you have to have, and that's what you have to build. Back, back to your your question too, and also to any of you. You got a business idea. Just as a way to get started. Let me know and let me find who does that somewhere in the country. I call my other buddies in the chain business. Who in your town does this? Your idea. And let me match you up with them and they can talk you through how did they do it? How did they start? Where did they get their money? How did they fail? What were their successes? And how did they get started? It's better than, than, than talking to local competition. But somebody across the country that's done the very have maybe they had the same idea, or you want to get into a particular type of business and talk to the competition, but way away, and they'll be more honest with you. But if you're going to go into business, don't think that you've got to go into business and, and research and Google who's making the money and who is what are the, the, the startup, 10 best startup companies in America to do? That's not where you start. You start with what your passion is and what you're willing to give up to do and to get behind it. Yeah, I was just bringing that venture capital just for the business end of it. But yeah. A testimony to Dan St. Louis, he is the man. There's something else. <laughs> <laughs> he answered more questions for me, got me on the right track to get me down the road like you're talking about months. That's Dan is I stumbled onto him. He he is the best thing around. Good folks out there. <laughs>